Here is a monster of a problem. Okay, here's the problem. Start with a triangle, draw one medium. Pick any point on the medium. Draw segments from the two other vertices through that point. Find the two points where those segments intersect opposite sides and connect them. Statement. The resulting segment is parallel to this base. So I couldn't solve it. I tried, I gave it an honest half hour and I couldn't solve it. So let me show you the geometric solution. I think this will help us once again highlight how geometry is elegant and fun, but requires ingenuity. And sometimes ingenuity, requiring ingenuity is a positive thing. When you are well fed, you have a nice job, and this is your hobby, then requiring ingenuity is a positive thing. But when you have a job to do, and it's part of your job, and you have a timeline, and the world depends on you, then what you want is a robust framework as opposed to uh, ingenuity. Right. So here's how you would solve it with ingenuity. So the key is to draw through this midpoint a line parallel to this segment. And in this segment, green one, you can invoke the mid-segment theorem. And you can argue that because this point is the midpoint of this segment, it divides this segment in two also. Okay, that's great. Now, so we have that. So now I'll be saying this a lot. Now look at this triangle consisting of this much of the side, this base of the medium, median, and this vertex. Right? In this triangle, we have this little chord that's parallel to the base. So we can make the following statement that this over this equals this over this. Am I right? If I break this triangle out, okay, and so the statement that I'm making is that this over this equals this over this, right? Similarly, it follows from the same thing. I will draw different bubbles. I want to say that this over this equals this over this. We've discussed these things. It's the same family of proportions. So that's what we have here. This over this equals this over this. Great. So we've established that even though it's a little bit messy. But now realize that this segment is twice this one. So if I consider the proportion of the ratio of this over the whole segment, it'll be half of the ratio of this to what's essentially half of that segment. So this over the whole side is half of this over this. Yeah, we're spending a lot of time on this proof. So what we just showed is that this over this is half of this over this. Yep. But the exact same argument, this over this, is also half of this over this. The same argument, but on the other side. Therefore, this over this equals this over this. And because we have this proportion, this line must be parallel to the base. QED. Nothing to it. Yeah, except I couldn't do it. Okay, so now let's do it by an, by an algebraic method, by a vector algebraic method, but let's first do a warm-up. Let's solve this problem. If we have a vector A and we have a vector B and from, a tip, and from the tip of B we have a vector C pointing at, an, at a random direction, kind of towards A. Where will be the point 
where if you, can, if you were to continue that line, it intersects A. That's the question. Let's solve that algebraically, because that's kind of what's, what's happening here. Again, I will think like a linear algebra student, and I will think of A and B as my basis, so I can express everything in terms of A and B, including C. So suppose that C is alpha A plus beta B. And in this case, first of all, alpha and beta are given because C is given. So alpha and beta are not my unknowns. They're given. Alpha and beta are given. They don't at all necessarily add up to one whatsoever. They're just whatever C is in terms of A and B. Okay, and suppose this vector right here is the gamma fraction of A. Gamma fraction of A, right? So this segment is gamma A. Again, this is not the length of the segment. It's proportion that it is of A. And so we need to find gamma, okay? Let's introduce another variable, delta, which is proportion of how much of C we need to take to end up at this point. So we'll answer the question of where is this point in two ways. We'll say what fraction of A it is. That's maybe the most direct way of saying it. And then we'll say, well, how far do we need to go to get here? We'll answer the two questions simultaneously. And I think it's clear, given the previous example, exactly what we'll do. We can get to this point in these two ways. On the one hand, it's gamma A. On the other hand, it's B plus delta C, right? So it equals B plus delta C. And C we've already expressed in terms of A and B. And once again, this is where a student of linear algebra would say we're done because we have two equations and two unknowns. Our two unknowns are gamma and delta. And because this is a vector equation, it will give us two equations. So So now this must equal zero, and this must equal zero. So from here, beta, I'm sorry, we're solving for delta. Delta equals minus one over beta. Am I right? Remember, alpha and beta are given. Gamma and delta are, is what we're looking for. And so from here, gamma equals minus alpha times that. So gamma equals alpha over beta. That's interesting. That's a simple answer. That, I didn't expect that. All right? So that's how far along, far along A we must be to find where C intersects A. Okay. I think that's what's kind of happening here because I see, I see there are some vectors and we're going from the tip of one through a certain point and find that intersection. So that's what's happening here. So that's why that will come in handy. All right. Imposing a vector framework upon this problem. Let me call this a vector A. I'll call this the vector B. Okay, then the median. What vector is the median in terms of A and B? Yeah, half A plus half B. Maybe I'll even write, right? Do you see what we're doing here? We're just translating the statement of the problem into vector speak, right? And we're just literally just doing step-by-step -step translation. No ingenuity required. And then it said, pick any point. Well, I will say, what's a good Greek letter we haven't used yet? I don't want to use gamma or delta. Phi, by popular demand. So let me call this fraction phi, okay? Phi, so what is this vector? So phi, so this vector right here, I don't want to give it a name, but it's phi, and then what is this vector right here, from here to here? Because that's the direction that we're, that we're going in. That's the direction in which we're going. That is uh, this vector right here, because it, the tip is here, minus b. So that's the direction in which we're going, right? And here is the problem that we're solving. So we'll see how much of this is the vector we're really after, because we want to find where this point is. But that's exactly the situation we have here. We have vector A, 
then we're going along vector b, and then we're going in some given direction c, given by this vector right here. And we want to find out where it intersects a. Do you see that it's the, exactly the problem that we've discovered there? Okay, so let's see. If I rewrite this, if I combine like terms, okay, so that's what we call vector c here, and we just need to find out where it lands, and we see right here what gamma equals. So here's our alpha, here's our beta, so gamma, which is exactly what we're looking for, what fraction of a it is, is phi over 2. Is it alpha over beta? Oh yeah, so simple. So that's where this point was. We just calculated it directly. And now let's calculate this point, but you know exactly what fraction of b it'll be, because we'll just repeat the, whole, the exact same exercise. And of course, because it just, they just reverse roles, the answer would be exactly the same. It's almost like the proof deserve, dissolves into a non-proof, into a self-evident statement. Right, so the gamma that we found, the proportion, equals this. And then we would do on the other side, maybe I'll call this gamma sub i, sub a, and this is gamma sub b. We would find that the two gammas are equal because the exact same logic will be repeated and it will be the same number. So these two proportions, so these two segments are identical proportions of the overall sides. There you go, that completes the proof. Therefore, this, this line is parallel to the base. I, do I look triumphant? I am triumphant because no ingenuity was required. By the time we were done writing down the condition of the problem and just calculating the obvious things, the solution was right there in front of us. It's almost anticlimactic how, just how simple it was. Okay? So there you go. These, I hope that these couple of problems are just a microcosm of the power of combining algebra and geometry. And we'll enjoy that for the rest of the course.